Master one thing at a time. If it takes you two months to get really good at playing clean bows on open strings and you can do a ton of them and you feel really good, add your fingers. If you're not quite ready to add your fingers, don't. Violin is a very like pat your head and rub your tummy kind of instrument. So it's sometimes easier to learn one thing and then learn the other thing and then put them together and then you're off to the races. N stands for nails. Cut them. You should be playing right on the top of your finger rather than on the pad of your finger. It's really important you cut your nails because if you don't, the violin makes a really weird sound because your nails start digging into the strings and then you're playing and it vibrates and it's gross and you can't get on top of your fingers and your technique is bad and your wrist drops. It's a vicious chocolate vanilla swirl. When you're starting to play with left hand fingering and you're holding the violin, take your hand, make a little J shape. The tip of your thumb should never come up here past the joint and should never be below the wood unless you're like really stretching far across. This is not a product placement for Apple. It should just stick up a little bit right there and you should be able to play all your notes. That's first position. There's like five positions on the violin, but first position is a good start for everyone. O is for other things that might come in handy along the way. These are rosins. This one is an olive rosin. This one is an amber rosin, but they do mostly the same things. Rosin is basically used to make the bow hair a bit stickier and grip better on the string. So before you play, you just take your rosin, rub it against your bow, and you're ready to rock. One of the things about rosin and your bow is that the more you use rosin and the more you play your bow, the more it builds up and eventually you're gonna lose bow hairs and you're gonna have to get your bow rehaired. I played my own bow in two different shows this summer and it hasn't gotten rehaired yet and it looks pretty dingy at this point. Care for your instruments. Another useful thing to have is a tuner. You can of course use a piano to tune at any time, this tuner though is specifically made for violins. I really like using it for actor musician work. It clips to your violin and you can attach it and lock it. That way when you're playing the violin and you turn on the tuner, you can see the note. And when the note turns green, it's in tune. That way you can do little uh, sneaky tuning on stage. Not everyone has one of these. I think they're important though. A little cloth to uh, wipe down your violin. Wiping down your fingerboard, which can get really, really dirty, is important. Wiping down your chin rest is also really important because you put that piece against your face, so there could be germs. P is for pizzicato. Pizzicato is basically plucking the string rather than bowing the string. Either you don't use your bow at all, or you hold your bow in your hand like this, or you hold your bow and you just pluck with your finger. You can also do left hand pizzicato. If you're playing pizzicato with no bow, then you just take your thumb, place it onto the right corner of the fingerboard, and just pluck away. Pizzicato is very fun and it definitely adds a different color to a lot of instrumentation on the violin and the cello and the viola and the bass. Q is for Quinn. You really haven't talked about what we're all here to know. Is it easy to play the violin? That's so weird. It takes years of practice, but it's one of the most rewarding things in my entire life. I never feel more at home than I do when I get to play the violin, which is why being an actor musician is just so incredible. Because it offers you the opportunity to share two sides of yourself, singing and dancing and acting and this instrument that you have grown up playing. And it's very, very special to a lot of us at Garner Theatre Productions and a lot of actors all over the world to be able to share our two passions in the same place. Because a lot of us have been telling stories with our instruments for a very long time. R is for rhythm and tempo. Rhythm and tempo, it's exactly what you think it is. The same as when you're singing, same as when you're playing any other instrument. Tempo wise, I feel like a lot of people always think we're playing fast. It's because we are. If you've ever played with a string player, you know that we love to rush. But did you know that sometimes the slow songs are the harder songs to play because they require far more control 
than some of the faster songs. That being said, the fast songs require a great deal of control as well. S is for scales. Everyone's favorite warm-up training activity. You do them here too. It's really, really great to work through scales because it's a great way to practice your intonation and your standard position for first position on the violin. <laughs> T. T stands for two notes, one bow. That's a slur. A slur is when you play two notes or three notes or four notes or 32 notes in the same bow direction. If you're on a down bow and there are 32 notes to play, you're playing them all in the down bow. <laughs> Thirteen, slurs and different bow directions are what create phrasing in a lot of violin music. It's very different if I were to play. Then when I play. is for understanding the difference between the violin and the fiddle. There isn't one. The violin and the fiddle are the same instrument. Maybe have different preferences of the sound that they want their instrument to make. They're more like classical strings and there's more fiddle strings and it has to do with their tension. But when it comes down to it, saying violin versus fiddle is like saying hip-hop versus ballet. We know that it's all dance, but the styles are very different. V is for vibrato. Vibrato is definitely a more advanced technique. Vibrato is basically sliding your finger back and forth between two tones to make a vibrating effect. <laughs> When you're starting out learning vibrato, teachers will often make you go very, very slowly until you get the hang of it and you loosen your wrist. Too tight vibrato can be really, really detrimental because it shakes the violin. You wanna keep your wrist loose and your fingers loose. W is for warm up. It may seem silly to warm up your hands and your wrists before you play the violin, but like dance or any physical activity, it is very, very hard on not only your hands and your wrists and your elbows, but also in your shoulders and your back and your neck. Some good exercises are stretching your fingers back, rolling your wrists, pushing your wrists in, kind of stretching out your back. Because you're engaging your shoulders forward so hard when you're playing the violin, you can get a lot of tension in here which pulls into this part of your back. So it's really important that you warm up if you don't want to get premature arthritis. X is for extreme violin. One of the best parts about being an actor musician is that a lot of the time you get to do some extreme instrument playing. Running all over the stage, or dancing, or getting up on chairs, or getting down from chairs. You need to have a really, really confident handle on the instrument you're playing to be able to focus your mind to anything else. Yes, I have been wearing sweatpants from the waist down this entire time. It's quarantine. Why is for you're ready to pick up the violin. So if you have a violin at home, or you've been thinking about you wanting to play the violin, or you just watched this video because you don't really know anything about the violin, I hope that you got something out of it. I've had a lot of fun hanging out with you all virtually. Remember, you don't have to be good. There's a lot of things that I'm not good at. Do. Z is for Zoom. 
once you're feeling confident with your violin, learn a song, and then have a Zoom concert for your friends and family. Share your love of music with everyone you love. <laughs> Thanks for following along with me. I hope that you learned something. Until next time, I'm Quinn.